Man, so I have been waiting for this. By the end of today's video, we are going to see some type of color on the slam box, the truck project that I have been working on. I also want to get the surface bed separated from the cab so that way I can paint and prime all of the surfaces and a hurricane is heading right for us. This should be interesting. And now, you're watching the Drunken Fiasco, AKA a Florida Hurricane channel of YouTube. Welcome to Bodie Vision. Hey, so what is up and welcome and thank you so much for joining me yet again on another video. So the first thing that I wanna do, I just wanna get right into it. We are working on the paint job. So naturally I need to get it sanded down, prepped and ready to get right into primer. So as I am making my way around the car, figuring out which type of body work I'm going to do and how much body work I'm going to do, we have this little hole right here. This is where the old filler was. The seat's actually sitting further back than it ever was before because the dash is sitting more back than it was in the truck originally. We are just going to be using the OEM fuel tank from the Lincoln Town Car, so this is no longer needed. So naturally what you would wanna do is cut out a piece of metal, perfect circle, the exact size of this, well actually a little bit smaller, weld in the gap, then grind the weld away 100% and make it disappear. But the approach that I wanna go is I actually want to make this in as part of the paint job because all of the details that I'm going to be doing, the more stuff that is on the body, the better it is going to look. I'm not going for a full shaved look. So it'll make a lot more sense once I start to do the paint job. And if you didn't understand or know by now, I'm going to be doing an intricate style patina paint job. So I have this piece right here. This circle is the exact circle size from a spray paint cap. Then I put a little bend in it and then now it sits perfectly right there. So I'm going to fire up my HTP 220 Pro Pulse. That welder has been nothing but phenomenal for me on this entire build. I'm going to put that right there and then try to do a really nice weld around that. And hopefully I could just leave it just like that. This is going to be something that we revisit when it comes time for the paint job. I'm gonna be doing some airbrush work right there, some neat effects. I want this to look like it was done 25 years ago. So that's the way that I'm gonna do it. So let's get this welded on and then keep moving. Now that that's welded in and all good, we can go ahead and move on. The next thing that we gotta do, we gotta mask off the truck. This is going to be masking off for anything that we do not want paint to get on. Even though this paint job is not gonna be so traditional, we still don't want paint anywhere where paint should have never been to begin with. All right, so right now it is actually the next morning. This is Wednesday morning and the hurricane is here right now, but I'm not going to let some rain and wind. And in central Florida, it's really not as bad as it was up in the panhandle. So what I wanna do right now, I wanna get some primer on this car so that way I can start to kind of see what's going on with it. Any of my low spots, anything that I want to block out, I need primer to be on there. And I'm kind of picking and choosing to what extent I wanna do some body work. There's a few dings that I'm actually going to highlight with an airbrush and I'll get a lot more into 
include that when I do my actual intricate paint process. But before I can do that, I wanna go ahead and lay down my primer as this is the first step of any paint process. I'm not just gonna go ahead and take some spray cans and start doing some kind of crazy stuff. I still wanna do an official, good, nice paint job, even though in the end it's just not going to be a traditional paint job. So let's go ahead and get that primer mix laid down in the hurricane. Hurricane can suck it. All right, so at this point, we have the primer on the front, we have the epoxy primer on the back. That's why it looks a little bit different. Now, I had in my mind or an idea that I wanted to implement more of a program that I could teach and talk to you specifically about the exact steps that I'm doing, why I'm doing them, how I'm doing them, but I don't wanna bog down my videos with all of those facts. I mean, of course, I put a few things in here and there, like about sanding this and what grid I'm using, and I did a 220. I'm gonna finish up probably with a 400 and 600, either way, before my base coat I want to finish with a 600 grit sandpaper finish this primer the epoxy primer is going to eventually get the same primer that's on there so I want to figure out a way that I can give a lot more of those details I'm talking long form content where I can give you step by step exactly what I'm doing without bogging down my actual video so what I want to do now obviously I couldn't paint this front side of the box and I could not paint the back side of the cab so I think it is time I need to remove the box for the final time also a lot of you guys had mentioned that I didn't have the box box tied to the cab or it looks like the box was trying to run away so I did connect it together I put some rubber bushings in between and ran a few bolts through there I am also going to brace the chassis a little bit more so all of that flex that you have been seeing is going to not be there anymore so let's go ahead and get the box ripped off then we can get the cab pulled in then I can start working on the cab and box separately to eventually get this paint job going man I cannot wait to show you how this job is going to turn out it's going to be it's gonna be good, man. So right now we are finished off. The last thing that I sanded with was a 600 grit. The entire surface we want to make sure it's really nice and smooth and then all of the layers on top of it to be as smooth as the surface is underneath it. So I got my black mixed up. This will be the first layer of many to go down on this truck in order to make it look how I want to make it look. Because it is my truck at the end of the day and I'm making it look how I want, spending the amount of time that I want to spend on it and having a good time while doing it.
All right, so here it is a few days later. Now, as I'm in the shop, kind of just messing around, I'm looking at the truck as if it's a canvas. I'm kind of trying to see what I like, what I don't like. So in this area now, let me back up a second. The entire patina paint job video is going to be one video on its own so that way I can explain step by step what I'm doing in the process. If you like how the car turned out, I'll show you the car to begin with. And if you decide you want to watch the entire video to see how I got there, that'll be the video that you're possibly looking for but I wanted to give you a little first look and what's going on in the background stuff that I don't always show so like I mentioned the truck is a canvas as I'm looking at it and messing around with the paint job so anything like this for example all of this tape is just going to be thrown away I'm not going to mess with any of this tape whatsoever I'm just going to be pulling it off and putting it in the garbage so for a patina paint job now I have done one quite a while ago but I did not exactly like the way that it looked so I decided for this one I'm going to do a lot more research take my time mess around with a bunch of different techniques and that at the end of the day that's all this is is messing around and having a good time so for the tape and for the paint I kind of want the paint to look like it has chipped away with age and I want it to be in an area that it makes sense so I want it to be a nice effect I don't want it to just smooth over so with a true patina look like real patina it actually looks like the paint chipped away because it did some patina paint jobs they look too soft for me so I wanted to have more hard lines so I messed around with two different styles right here and I'm not super happy with either one of these styles but that's why you mess around and that's why you figure stuff out so this what it is I just put a piece of tape down and then I ripped it this over here is a lot more jagged I think this looks too like this looks too much like a pattern for it to be natural so I don't like that style this one over here is a little bit more wavy which I don't know if I like the waves but on the roof over here we can see I kind of like the way that this looks a little bit better so I went ahead and I messed with the roof in a similar fashion even getting rid of some of the swoops a little bit just kind of trying to make some lines and some ideas and obviously where the tape is will remain one color so that color that is going to remain up here is going to be a brown black nasty rust primer looking color a lot of these old Fords they used a brown primer back in the day so the color code that I got for my brown is actually that exact Ford primer color but there's going to be different reds and yellows dark browns light browns black dark black all mixed in and speaking of black I wanted to touch on what this coat actually was so this was just a black primer I wanted to do an additional coat of primer and I wanted to make it black because I'm going to be doing some type of sanding work on this paint job as well and the black is going to be a good indicator that if I hit black I'm going to hit regular primer very shortly so I need to pump the brakes and not sand anymore so now after that last time lapse sequence where you saw this really glossy almost looking like clear coat that was after I finished sanding it with my 600 I wanted to come back and wash it with my degreaser and just some water and get it wiped completely clean get it rinsed off and then at that point you're going to be able to see what body work you missed and in this case I didn't miss much body work because I'm not going to be doing any more even though I did do quite a lot of body work but it is what it is so we are just having a good time I'm just going to mess around with some colors mess around with some techniques and I am also waiting for the last thing is I got new roof lights I want to make sure any drilling that I need to do I do it before I get into my brown and into that layer this paint job is going to be layers dripping paint airbrush effects and all different kinds of stuff I don't like when people do patina jobs and it just looks like they took a spray can and just went crazy with it we're not trying to do that I'm actually trying to turn this into somewhat of an art piece to look as authentic as possible and I'm going to take my time doing that and that is going to be on the next one so thank you guys so much for watching like this video let me know what you think about everything down below and I'm out see you